RVing to the Yukon and Alaska provides incredible opportunities to make memories your dreams will envy. He's walking right in front of us. It likely won't be easy or without challenge. It definitely won't be cheap, but it will be worth it. On this episode, we're going to look at what our trip cost, look at some of the challenges we faced, and even discuss some of the regrets we might have. We are Terry and Cindy O'Keefe. We've been camping together for more than 40 years, and we invite you to join us in a 12-episode adventure as we explore the Yukon and Alaska. to break down the trip costs into five categories fuel food trips uh, or tours and excursions camping and maintenance and all the prices we're going to give are in US dollars uh, but we've also done a rough conversion for Canadian dollars but before we dive into these specific costs some basic information that should help interpret the numbers for example our journey took 70 days important when considering food and campground cost. Our drive was 17,893 kilometers or 11,141 miles and 90% of that was towing our trailer. And our truck averaged 25 liters per 100 kilometers, that's 9.41 miles per gallon. So let's look at our biz biggest expense and that was fuel. Now, at the time of recording this, fuel prices are actually about 22% lower than they were in 2022. So take that into, uh, into account when you're uh, listening to these numbers. Okay, so I'm gonna get in line for gas here. For example, the most expensive gas in Canada we bought was at Toad River on the Alcan, and it was $2.40 Canadian per liter, or 6.95 US dollars per gallon. There's the spit. And the most expensive gas we encountered in Alaska was in Homer at $5.40 US per gallon. So the total we spent on fuel was $6,036.58. Our second biggest expense was for food. This includes dining out and buying groceries. So we have both been camping for years and we absolutely know how to cook our own food, uh, stay on a budget, but for this trip we ate up more than expected and we enjoyed it. This was a bucket list trip and we wanted to enjoy the wonderful Alaskan food. And secondly, food in the north, with very few exceptions, is very expensive. A halibut dinner for two, including a beer in Alaska, was $125. A case of water at the Dawson City grocery store was 20 bucks, but there were a few exceptions. Groceries in large centers like Anchorage or Fairbanks seemed considerably less expensive than more remote communities like Valdez, Seward, or Homer. And we also found restaurant meals in Dawson City to be quite reasonably priced. So the overall cost of groceries and dining, $4,567.73, averaging out to about $32.63 per person per day. Our third biggest expense was for tours and excursions. These included wildlife and glacier boat tours in both Valdez and Seward, a glacier dog sledding and helicopter tour, bear viewing flight in Homer, flight seeing in Denali, 
and many other smaller attractions. The prices ranged from $10 for a guided walking tour in Dawson City to $680 for a bear viewing flight. In total, we spent $2,607.51 on tours. Yes, that's a lot of money, um, but this really is a bucket list trip, as Cindy said, and we were willing to spend it because you don't know if you're going to get a chance to go back. And we had no regrets. Well, maybe, maybe one, and we'll get to that in a few seconds. Um, but we did try to control those costs when possible. Um, sometimes our interests didn't naturally align. Cindy really wanted to do the, the glacier dog sledding and it was the highlight of the trip for her and I wanted to do the bear viewing and so those were things that, that we just did alone. The next biggest expense we had was for camping. We probably boondocked less than expected but we also found excellent value at the Yukon government campgrounds. They only charged $20 Canadian per night for dry camping and that included firewood. And uh, directly behind the campsite is Kluwani Lake. The most expensive camping was for a full service waterfront site on the Homer Spit. In total, campgrounds cost $2,243.07. That averaged out to $32.04 per night. So the uh, truck and trailer are pretty filthy. You ready to go to work? Oh yeah, you'd like to, I know. Hey. <laughs> and our final expense to break down is for maintenance and repairs. Um, and we were very fortunate that on this trip, when things did go wrong, there weren't too many things that we encountered that we couldn't take care of ourselves. Now, we did have our windshield repaired in Dawson Creek for $30, and the tire pressure monitoring sensor on the trailer had to be repaired in Tope, and that also cost $30. What are you doing? What are you doing? We're almost ready. We also had oil changes in Whitehorse on the way up and in Fairbanks, uh, as well as air and cabin filters, before heading home. The total cost of maintenance while away was $461.34. That's the deflection with just a probably a quarter tank of water in it. So. We're going to try and reinforce the supports here. Now, we should also mention that prior to leaving, we spent $1,071 getting our truck and trailer ready for the journey. If we include that, our total maintenance and repairs were $1,533.19. So the grand total for this 70 day, 11,141 mile epic adventure was $16,988.08. And it was worth every penny. And now we want to talk to you about some of the challenges that we faced. It would be easy to call it the chapter of things that went wrong, but we're thinking positively here. And these were things that we were challenged with, but we got through it. One of the first challenges we encountered was the effects caused by the frosties and potholes. Holy cow. The first time it occurred, the lock on our fridge and freezer became dislodged and allowed the entire contents of the fridge, including a very large jug of maple syrup, to empty out on the floor while we were underway. We quickly overcame that by changing out the pin to a locking one we carried as a spare couple pin. Then there was the awning. Well, given how rough some of the roads have been, the, uh, the trucks performed fantastic and the, uh, the trailer's done pretty well. We've had some, some issues with some things coming loose, but the uh, one thing the trailer that's really bucked us is the, um, the awning quit working. And uh, it's been kind of soggy and foggy, and it would have been nice to have the awning. Uh, we checked in a number of places what it could be. We took the switches off, checked them. Then uh, we checked the wiring down here, uh, and uh, it was okay. So our last resort was to go up right there and uh, check there. And sure enough, we uh, used a power drill to get the awning partly open today. Got that apart and found uh, a wiring connection and come undone and uh, so we spliced in a bit of an extension and uh, got the awning working again 
And uh, so, of course, we th said the awning's working. We can barbecue in the rain, and lo and behold, the rain has stopped. And as we mentioned, we had a stone chip in the windshield and tire pressure monitoring system issue on the trailer. But in each situation, we found a local repair outlet that was fair, honest, and wanted to help Alaskan travelers. Are you over there somewhere? <laughs> and Mother Nature also enjoyed throwing some challenges our way, whether it was a heavy fog when we were trying to drive to Skagway. Visibility is literally uh, 20, 20 yards and it's another 20 kilometers uh, to Skagway, so we might just turn it around here. Or a forest fire that basically shut down Jasper. All the uh, campgrounds here in Jasper are closed, everyone has to leave, and uh, there's quite a line for gas. Each of these situations required us to be flexible, uh, patient, and adaptable, and to understand that not everything on a trip this long is going to go to plan. One other challenge we wanted to mention, because it involves a piece of equipment that will help eliminate said problems, occurred in a campground where the electrical supply at our post was problematic. But our surge protector and circuit analyzer saw the problem as soon as we plugged in and shut down the power before any damage could be done. So the last potential challenge for this type of trip is being with your partner in close quarters for long periods of time. <laughs> So for us, it meant driving the entire width of Canada in a 21-foot box over 70 days. For us, one of the most important things to make that easier was realizing we didn't have to do absolutely everything together. Cindy went dog sledding and I went bear viewing and we were absolutely okay with that. And having an RV that was separate from our vehicle was also uh, really, really handy because if I wanted to go and take pictures on the Denali Road and Cindy wanted to stay behind and read a book, you know, having a truck separate from the trailer, that made that really, really easy. Um, but there was a couple of times patience might have gotten lost. But at the end of the day, it wasn't just a wonderful trip, but it was a wonderful adventure for us as a couple. How much do I have to pay you for that? Nothing. It's free. It's free. It's been pretty incredible. So we've been asked by many viewers if we had any regrets, and we don't want to dwell on any negativity, but sure, we had a few. Yeah, you know, for me, uh, as much as I enjoyed my bear viewing flight to uh, Lake Clark National Park, uh, I probably wish I'd spent the extra money and instead uh, gone to Brooks Falls. What, you didn't enjoy seeing the sleeping bear? Yeah, he, 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 he did look very, <laughs> very restful. We did regret not spending more time on the Alaska Highway, especially around Stone Mountain and Muncho Lake. They were absolutely beautiful. And I wish we had planned a bit more time that uh, would have allowed us to drive the Dempster Highway uh, up to Tuk to Yuk Tuk and uh, we could have dipped our toes into the Arctic Ocean. And I think we both regret not going halibut fishing in Homer, but the weather simply did not want to cooperate. Yeah, we're fair weather fisher people, I'm afraid. <laughs> Generally speaking, that's a pretty weak list of regrets and it really showed what an amazing trip and what we experienced and accomplished. And we wanted to end this episode uh, with a few words from people who are far wiser uh, than us, but it really relates to 
that whole RVing to Alaska adventure. When it comes to time, first place stands still. So don't rush. Take the time to bask in the epicness around you. If you make the trip about the destination and not the journey, you may just miss out. And remember, straight paths make for dull stories. And if you're trying to decide if you want to embark on an RV adventure to the Yukon and Alaska, remember these words from Yukon poet Robert W. Service. Let us journey to a lonely land I know. There's a whisper on the night wind. There's a star agleam to guide us. And the wild is calling, calling. Let us go. We want to thank you for watching our Alaska and Yukon uh, series and hope that you'll continue to follow our, follow our channel uh, as we do some exploring this summer uh, in Ontario. And next year, hopefully, we'll be making another epic journey to Newfoundland and Labrador.